Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. I thought I would do a casual vlog today, updating my tape and extension. So I'm gonna remove the ones that I have in now, put in some fresh ones, talk a little bit about that. And then I'm thinking to also share about some skincare products that I've been loving for my dry skin now that it's almost winter and it's getting into the colder months. By the way, those are my kids. It's like always loud in here. My skin is naturally already dry, but once it gets into the colder months, it's even more so dry. And when I put makeup on top, it doesn't always look the best. So I have to kind of use more hydrating products and things like that. So I just wanted to share a little bit about that, kind of like what I do for my dry, dry skin in particular, if you are interested. So yeah, back to these tape and extensions. I cut my hair short. I think in July. Before that, I had extensions in that were probably up to here, and I loved them. But when it came time to remove them, y'all, the struggle was real. For some reason, this tape was so strong, it did not want to come out of my hair. And I do have the same tapins in right now. Hopefully, they come out a lot better this time, but I'm thinking I only have two pieces to remove on each side, so it won't be as bad. And these were sent to me by the brand Doris Hair, which I thought it was pretty good, but I reached out to them and told them my experience and they said that a lot of people were complaining that the tape wasn't strong enough, so they made it even stronger. I guess they made it too strong, but they're like, I'm so sorry to hear about your experience. Thank you for sharing your experience. They'll keep that information in mind. So customer service wise, I would say they are, have been nothing but really, really great, but it's just that those set of tape ends, that's the thing with like Amazon tape and extensions is that I feel like they're always upgrading and changing the formulas and stuff so it gets tough but once I took those out I was just not happy with my hair at all so I was like you know what I'm just gonna go back to what I usually love which is short hair on me and I have been loving just like really short hair on me in particular right now it's like not really styled or anything and I decided to add two single-sided tapes on both sides for a little bit of extra volume and just those two pieces they're not even full pieces and they're not sandwiched together make a really big difference if you have fine thin hair like I do so what I did is I added a half piece right here and it grew out quite a bit so it's definitely more than time for me to remove these let me just kind of pin this hair back to show you guys so I did a half piece here this is how much it grew out and usually the way tape and extensions work is you kind of sandwich the tape ends in between your hair but for these I used single sided tape and I do have a video on that I'll try to link it right here hopefully I don't forget so instead of sandwiching another tape and piece on the underside you just use a single sided tape which is what you see right here so it's just one tape and piece right here so this is a half piece and then this is a full piece but it's also single sided tape so just these two pieces right here placing them right here on the sides where I don't have a lot of volume for me personally in my hair it made a world of a difference it's not as like it doesn't weigh down your hair as much because of the single sided tape it's a lot more natural so if you want a little bit more volume and you have fine thin hair and you don't want to deal with like a full head of tape ends you're not looking for length just a little bit extra volume I would highly recommend trying out tape ends with single sided tape and they usually stay in place for I think I had these in for six weeks maybe more definitely more probably almost two months at this point so yeah it's definitely time to remove them so we're gonna go ahead and do that Hopefully it's not a struggle. And this remover is from Amazon as well. It's from the brand The Hair Shop. So what I usually do is I place the tip in between the two pieces of tape and just squeeze some of that remover in between the tape. These are kind of ready to come out, honestly. And this remover helps the tape lose its stickiness. So you're usually able to just kind of like take them out. But I feel like the tape is still stuck on my hair. Is it? Or is this the other tape? Let me see. I'm going to try to take off the underside. Oof. Yeah. Do you see how that tape is still stuck to my hair? This is what I dealt with last time and I was just, I was so upset about it. So I took off the single sided tape. That one came off no problem. But this whole piece right here is super sticky and it does not want to come out of my hair. So that's the only downside I would say to Amazon tape ends. You just never know what you want to get. It's not so bad if you only have one or two tapes to deal with, but when I had that full head of tape ends to remove, especially in the back, I was just so over it. It was it was a hot mess. Oh, this tape came out actually. That's good. There's a little bit of like glue residue on my hair. You want to make sure you get all of it out. Otherwise, it's gonna feel gunky and gross. 
All right, it doesn't look like much right now, but you can see right here on the bottom, this is where the bulk of the volume is added for me personally. You don't really see it so much at the top because the tape ends don't start from the top here. You kind of place them right here on the sides. So this is where the bulk of the volume goes, and this is where I have kind of the least amount of volume. So when I add just those two pieces of tape ends, it adds so much volume and creates like this nice blunt cut that I'm looking for that I otherwise wouldn't really get. But the rest of them, they came out. There was like a little bit of sticky residue, but nothing too crazy. And it is normal to see some of your hair come out with the tape ins. Your hair falls out naturally every single day, but when it's sandwiched in between tapes, it has nowhere to go. The only thing I would say that's not normal is if you have hair with like follicles attached to it. That's no, you don't want that. The first time that I removed them, I actually used isopropyl alcohol because that's essentially what tape and remover is. This one has like a mineral oil in it, I think. Yeah, and then like an another ingredient or two. And I do feel that this worked a lot better, a lot better than just straight isopropyl alcohol. Plus it has a little tip, so it makes it a lot easier to kind of get in between your tapes. All right, so now that those are out, I'm gonna go ahead and wash dry the hair, style it, and we're gonna put some new ones in. Actually, when I get out of the shower, that's when I wanna do my skincare, so we'll do that first. Nice and squeaky clean, you might be able to hear the dehumidifier going, it's right outside the door in the hallway here. I also wanna self tan tonight, so I did like a nice exfoliating session in the shower. One of my all time favorite self tanners is the Bondi Sands Aero self tanners. So let me grab my coffee, I forgot my coffee. So maybe I'll include that towards like the end of the vlog since I usually like to self tan right before bed and let it develop overnight but now on to skincare while my hair is wrapped up in this towel soaking up that moisture one of the products that I have been loving for my dry skin in particular which has been viral for quite a long time now I'm just now hopping on the trend it's the COSRX advanced snail mucin essence right here the reason why I never tried it is because it's just the concept kind of grossed me out and then I saw videos of people like putting their hands together and separating it and then you can see the snail mucin and, and I don't know just something about it I was like oh I don't know if I could do it it just looks and sounds kind of gross but I was like my skin it needs something I love this from Dr. Circle this one's kind of like a bi-phase formula and it's a milky essence so you give it a good shake a lot of people love this for good reason it helps to kind of bring a little bit of hydration back into the skin but I finally decided to pull the trigger and try this out and I have been really liking it and I feel like my skin has as well it is a little bit different from this milky one this one really absorbs quickly into the skin this one's more of a almost like a thicker watery not gel but it's a little bit thicker and it's not sticky at all but it kind of plumps the skin. This one helps to kind of hydrate it and I feel like this one plumps it a little bit more. So I don't know, I just have been really, really liking it. So this is like a must, either this one or this one, at least some kind of essence. If you have really dry skin, find one that your skin loves and add it into your skincare routine during the dry winter months because I feel like it will make quite a difference. What's up? Raisins? Oh, no thank you, but thank you, Miska. And then another product that I've had for a while, have been using for a few years now, and I just really, really love is the PMD at Home Microdermabrasion System. I think this is their Proline one. It is a little bit pricey, but in my opinion, it's kind of the next best thing. Step down from the Med Spa Microdermabrasion. I do think that if you can go to the Med Spa, get Microdermabrasion done, and keep up with it, your skin will probably see amazing results but it's pricey, it's expensive to do that. So for me, this is like the next best thing, something that I can do at home. And it took me a few months when I first got it, a few years back to kind of see results. It's very easy to use. I just use it once a week, glide it over clean, dry skin. It has three different suction modes. And again, I use it once a week and it took a couple of months for me to see like truly see results. But after that, it's just been maintenance. And I'm gonna be honest, I usually just use this in the winter time because in the summertime, I don't feel like I really need to. But this has just been another product that I personally have seen really great results with. It might be different for everyone. Like everybody has different skin. Everybody's looking for something different, you know. And there are a few other products I ordered on Amazon that I wanna incorporate into my skincare, like uh, exfoliating pads, because even though I have dry skin, it gets clogged up easily. So, you know, depending on your skincare, you're kind of looking for different things. But I would highly recommend trying an essence if you really suffer with like dry skin, especially like fine lines. This one I feel like really helps to plump. It's not like crazy world of a difference, but I did wake up with what felt like plumper skin. I used to use hyaluronic acid, but I feel like I would 
definitely use this over hyaluronic acid and then once a week microdermabrasion just kind of like consistently throughout the dry winter months and I feel like your skin will love you for that but again that's just been my experience so let me show you guys what this looks like. I'm, try, I'm gonna try not to be gross because I never liked when people would like show that snail mucin situation. But I just kind of start on the forehead and if I lift my fingers off my forehead and drag it to my cheek, I'm gonna see like a snail trail and I'm not about that life. So I just start at the forehead, bring down my nose and then go around my entire face and then kind of pat it in and let it sit there and let my skin soak up all that goodness. And it does take a little bit of time to kind of soak into the skin, so I would wait until you apply your other products. But no scent, love that. So if you don't love fragrances, it has no fragrance whatsoever. And I don't know, I think it's just, I can see why it went viral, like for good reason. This one in particular. So I'll link this one down below. I get it on Amazon, it was on sale for like $14. I'm not gonna use this right now because I just used this yesterday. You don't wanna overdo it and use it like every single day. But maybe I'll do like a video in the future of like an at-home spa session, because I have a few products that I love, like my Foreo UFO2, and do like an at-home spa session. It's very easy to use. You just glide it over the skin, don't go more than once. And once a week, clean up the heads, the nozzle, and you're good to go. That is, that's literally it. So once I apply the essence in the daytime, I'll just go in with a moisturizer. I've been loving the Botanical Republic Antioxidant Moisturizer. I feel like I switch out my moisturizers quite a lot though, so I'm never just committed to one. But this one's nice, it has really great ingredients, and it feels nice on the skin. It's not like too greasy, not too thick, not too, too light. It has like a nice, I don't know, it's just really nice. I've just really been loving it, so I would repurchase it. I'm almost all out of the cleanser. This one is great for dry skin because it takes off your makeup. I use this part of a two-step skin cleanse. First, I'll go in with the Sandalwood Best Skin Ever oil right here. And I'll kind of massage this into the skin, give my skin a nice little massage, and then I'll go in with this cleanser here to really remove everything. And it's kind of in my two-step cleansing at night. And I feel like you get like a good massage into the skin that way as well. Really great ingredients. So I'll link the website for Botanical Republic. If you're looking for, they are pricier. I do have a 20% discount code with them. I think it's still valid because they did send those to me with no obligation to post. So you can get 20% off if you do or something. But if you're looking for like clean, I know nobody likes that word, but just like good ingredients in your skincare, I think they really, really got that down. So that's why I love them. That's kind of like my dry skincare situation right now. And you get like that, do you guys see that little bit of glowiness? I'm gonna go ahead and do my makeup, dry my hair, and then we'll get on to adding in some tape-ins. I'll just show you quickly how I do it because I do have quite a few videos on my channel at this point. My hair is dried and styled. We have some makeup on. By the way, here's what the skin looks like. I do have a bright light, so let me just block it so you can get kind of more of a re realistic look because I feel like the bright just makes everything super duper bright. But there are certain things, like I am 30 one years old i had to think about that one for a second and i do have um you know expression lines fine lines especially crow's feet and they get more dramatic throughout the day and like no matter what there's always going to be like they're always going to be visible but for me the biggest thing is dry patches mainly in these areas here so finding a good skincare routine and skincare products and makeup products as well which i do want to share about some in the future but l'oreal hyaluronic acid the true match serum here is so good if you have dry skin i've talked about it in the past before so here's what the skin looks like you see it has like a little bit of glowiness still and this might be a hot take i don't powder my face in the summer i do powder my face but I have such dry skin that I just don't find the need to powder my face. And I know that might be a hot take because some people are just cannot not powder their face. But I find that anytime I powder my face, when it's really dry and going through it, my skin looks so much worse. And it's just like automatically, it's, it's just not a good look. So, I don't know, give it a try. If you have really dry skin, you might stop powdering your face. You know, give it a try one day and see how you like your makeup. Now onto the hair. Again, so here's what my hair looks like all washed and styled. I kind of have the same hair care routine when it comes to hair care products for my short, fine, thin hair. But this is what the hair looks like. Like I can totally go without, you know, the tape and extensions, but just adding a few pieces, it just gives me that fullness that I'm looking for on the sides here, especially at the bottom for like a nice blunt cut. And I've always, always had fine, thin hair. I have a certain amount of follicles in my scalp. I cannot change that. It's just 
how God created me. So using tape and extensions, specifically single-sided tapins, has been really beneficial. Sometimes I like to do a whole head when I'm my fingers are itching for longer hair. But I've just been really loving shorter hair. Let me zoom in a little bit. I just feel like shorter hair really works for my hair type. So I don't know, I've just been loving it lately. We'll see how long it stays, but Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I think I'm actually going to place half tapes instead of the full strip. So, cut them in half, because I feel like when I cut them in half, they're a bit more flexible and it's not like this long strip. If for whatever reason you do want to pull your hair back or something, I feel like the half, half pieces are just a lot easier to work with. And you do also want to be doing this on clean hair because you don't want to wash your hair for at least 24 hours. Otherwise, the tapes will slip right out. So do this on freshly washed hair. That way you're not having to wash your hair that same day or the next day. So I'm going to create kind of, usually the way that you apply tape ends is you create kind of a U-shape. So I'm going to create a clean part going this way. And I think I'll do maybe one, two, three, four. That way it's like four halves, two full pieces. We'll see. To make sure that your part is nice and clean so that hair is not getting snagged in between the tapes and this is where this velcro strip here hair grippers from amazon come in really handy because you can just keep the rest of the hair out of the way so it's not bothering you grab your piece of tape in and again i'm going to cut these in half and i'm not going to be sandwiching them together i'm going to be using single-sided tape and you're going to be angling them this way and I'm going to place it, I don't know, I think I'm going to place this one like right here. You don't want it too close to the front. You want it at least two or three finger widths away from the hairline, no matter where you are. So about two to three finger widths away, I'm going to place it probably like right here. I like to place it a few millimeters away from the root. You don't want it too close to the roots because it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be tugging. So just a few millimeters away, press it down. And then lift that up and naturally, because it's sticky, it's going to pick up some of your own hair with it as you flip it over. So whatever it grabs, grab that hair as well. And then make sure this side has a clean part as well because again, you don't want your hair to have any snagging going on when you're brushing it. You want the parts to be as clean as possible. Now is when you grab your single sided tape and these I'm going to have to cut in half as well. Sandwich that right on top. And that is literally it. You can let the hair go, make sure it's comfortable. I think I'm going to keep just half a piece here. And then I'll do maybe one, two, three in the second row. I don't know. I'm kind of like thinking out loud. You do want a little bit of space in between each row. You don't want to do row after row after row. At least I personally wouldn't recommend it. Okay, when you're going to cut your hair, you don't want to pull it down and then not pull this hair down as well because this hair is bouncy and this one's pulled down so when you let go, it's going to be shorter. When you're measuring the length to cut it, just make sure you're pulling down all of the hair. I'm kind of nervous. I'm always nervous to cut it. something like that, right? <laughs> if anything, you're better off cutting it longer and then fixing it shorter later, but I think that's about right. All right, I finished both sides of the hair, so I just wanted to show you what it looks like. This one, by the way, um, my neighbor, our neighbor, we're living in the RV, so we're staying somewhere in North Carolina as we build our future home. That's a whole story in and of itself. When you're staying at an RV campground, you're pretty close to your neighbors, but he's building something. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do, so I get it. But you're gonna hear noises like that. This is why this is a vlog and not like a super professional video. I'm just here to share stuff, day-to-day -day stuff, stuff that I love, like tape and extensions, things like that. Right now the tape and extensions are still very, very, very soft and silky. But as you wash them, the more you wash them, they kind of roughen up a little bit and even more thickness to the hair. But just don't wash them for like 24 or 48 hours. Let that tape kind of have time to adhere to your hair otherwise they will literally slip right out um, and yeah they should last usually six weeks on average I would say you can curl your hair 
all of that kind of treat it like your own natural hair and then you take them out but yeah that's just kind of a little tip of how i add fullness to the hair for my short fine thin hair that is that i do want to self tan later tonight i'll see if i'll include that in this part of the vlog because i feel like this vlog is already super duper long but i did have a package come in that i did want to share about on amazon so i follow julia havens on social media and she posted about this really cute vici I think it was like a sweater jacket combo with a scarf attached to it and I was like you know what let me just go on Amazon and see if they have anything similar so I typed in jacket with attached scarf and literally the exact same jacket came up like so many different sellers selling the exact same jacket and a ton of different colors so it came in today and let me show you guys what it looks like Ooh. okay so the material I'm not sure about the Vici one I got a size small it says it was a blend of wool and polyester on the website, Amazon page. But it almost feels like felt. So we'll see. It looks really cute. But let me try it on and we'll see. This is what it looks like. Oh, I guess the scarf is not attached. That's interesting. So maybe it is a little bit different. But the print and everything looks exactly the same. And again, I'm not sure about the material for the Vici one. But here's this one. I don't know if you can tell. It literally feels kind of like felt material it's pretty thin on the thinner side and then the stitching is not that great because this is literally all that is holding these two pieces of fabric together okay okay let's try it on nonetheless okay here is what it looks like on me Again, I got a size small, and I was worried the small would be not as oversized as I want it to be, but I feel like the small is perfect. And it is on the thinner side. Quality, I'm not sure about, especially since I can already see, like, see these strings are kind of coming a little bit loose. And then if this frays and goes bad, then that just kind of ruins the whole entire design. I'm not sure about the Vici one, like if it's made out of the same thing. I hope not, because I don't, I think even this one, I think I might have paid, yikes, maybe $50 for it. Okay, they had a 20% off coupon, so it was listed for $50, but it came out to $39.99, so $40. I feel like $40, it's not bad, and this is without the scarf. Let me put on the scarf. I'm probably going to keep it, because I do think it's cute, like with some black booties, maybe some jeans. I think it's a cute piece for the fall time not so much the winter because it is very very thin but it's not a hundred percent what I, what I thought it would be again I don't know about the Vici one I just looked up the Vici one it's completely sold out in all sizes but it is selling for a hundred and four dollars but you can always use like an influencers code like I think Julia sometimes does save 25% or 30% so and it's 100 percent polyester but that one is different like the tassels look a lot more full than this one and then also i noticed that that scarf from vici has trim on both sides of the scarf and then it says built in scarf so that scarf i think is built in like let me show you a picture here's a picture of i think this is a collab with kelsey it says kelsey light and this is her wearing it she looks absolutely stunning in it but it's the fit looks different in the Vici one and I also noticed that one part of the scarf has like this section right here has um, the embroidery on both sides whereas this scarf only has the embroidery I think on one side it looks like so and it's just her sleeves the sleeves in this one seem wider and it just seems like a nicer fit versus this Amazon version but again this one's $104 and this one I snagged for $40 but I just saw it on Julia and I was like let me see if Amazon has something similar so I decided to order it and I mean for $40 I would buy $40 but for anything more than that probably not like not 50 <laughs> so I don't know and I don't know if maybe a size medium would give you more of an oversized fit um so I think it's cute it's like really trendy but I don't know that's just kind of my review let me know what you guys think I'm gonna be removing my makeup because I want to self tan so I figured let me actually film this portion what I'm doing right now is applying a few pumps of this, this is not the Sea Book though, this is the Sandalwood Oil, it's from the same brand. Um, I originally started with the Sea Buckthorn Oil because I heard it's so great for the skin to use it kind of like an all-in-one, but 
it didn't work for me like a skin reset so I decided to try the sandalwood one because people said they had better luck with the sandalwood one where they strictly just used this as like a cleanser moisturizer exfoliator all in one <sighs> let me cancel out some of that noise I started just using it as a two-step oil cleanser so I'll apply it a few pumps to dry skin and then just kind of massage my skin for a few minutes not like 30 seconds but like just Literally a few minutes, massage it into my skin, breaking everything up, massaging the skin gently. And I do this, try to do this literally every single night. And I do think it has made an improvement in my overall skin. But I can't just use this because it will clog up my skin. Like I can't just rinse this off and call it a day. Because that just doesn't work for my skin in particular. So what I'll do is go in with some water. And then kind of massage it some more. And then I'll rinse it off. And it's not going to rinse off completely for me because it's still pretty oily. So, you know, water and oil don't really mix. But this just kind of helps to break up any product that you have from makeup and all that. And do like a nice cleanse while massaging your skin at the same time. So let me rinse off the rest of it. And this is when I'll go in with my regular cleanser. I'm almost all out of the Revive one from Botanical Republic. And it doesn't even really want to pump anymore. That's one thing I don't like is once I get to the bottom, it doesn't really want to pump anymore. So I'll just apply some from the tube. Like I have to open the tube. But this cleanser is really nice because it's gentle. And it really does not strip my skin at all. Like it gets the makeup off. But it's almost hydrating. So I'll use this as a second step cleanser. And this I'll just work into the skin and wash it off completely. And then just go ahead and pat the skin dry. I have this makeup towel here. And then I go straight in to the snail mucin essence. Essence. I don't know why I said that weird. And just <laughs> oh see this is why I can't like spread it out because ugh I can't I'm trying not to think about it. I don't know. Like and not everybody gets grossed out but for me mm, no thank you. Moving on, so I'll just pat this into the skin, and oh, this product is so, so good. So once I have the essence on, I'll just go in with a moisturizer, moisturizers. For the morning, I'll use the Botanical Republic one, and then I got this sample when I bought the new Naturian Lip Balms. It's their Rich Moisture Cream. Actually, I applied that on too early. Let me let that essence kind of seep into the skin a little bit more. Sometimes I'll use different oils, whatever, but today I'm just going to keep it simple. The essence and then a moisturizer. And then we are all ready to self-tan. So when it comes to self-tanning, you want to make sure that your skin is exfoliated, I would say at least a day before. Because if you do it the day of, I feel like your skin is too fresh. I don't know, I just prefer doing it at least a day or two before. And then do not apply lotion all over your body because the lotion is just going to act as a barrier for the self-tan. If you do have any really dry areas like elbows, knees, ankles, then you do want to apply a little bit of lotion, ocean, a little bit of lotion in those areas to help hydrate them so that the self-tanner doesn't really stick to those areas and make them appear a lot darker. So if you have like really, really dry knees, ankle area, elbows, maybe your knuckles a little bit, then go ahead and apply a lotion. I love this one here. It's Tree to Tub. Their Shea Cocoa Body Butter right here. It smells so good. This is their Sunkissed Citrus. And it's really great ingredients. Like super simple. It's literally shea butter, cocoa butter, vitamins B5 and C, olive oil, jojoba seed oil, aloe vera, tea tree, rose water, and sweet orange essential oil. That's literally it. And it's just such a great lotion. It's like not too, too greasy. It just smells so good. And my all-time favorite self-tanner. I've tried so many different kinds. Mine Tan. I do love Mine Tan. I have this Tan Lux one here. I tried Loving Tan. I know people like love that one. I don't know. I just, it didn't live up to the hype for me personally. And I've just tried so many different kinds. Like Lux and Filtered. Really expensive. They came out with a mousse one. I like their gradual self-tanners, but they're... Moose one is insanely expensive and this one's really affordable. I got the one for light to medium because I am light skinned. I'm not trying to be a hundred shades darker than I am, but at the same time when I have a little bit of color, I feel, you know, like, you know, this nice sun kissed glow, you feel a little bit better. So picking a shade that is 
right for you is very important because if I were to go with something that's too dark, I would just look kind of dirty and muddy and not the best looks. Just kind of try to pick a color that's right for your skin type. And I personally use a mitt. This one's also from Bondi Sands. I tried the whole glove thing and I know that gloves don't absorb any product whereas a mitt will absorb it, but I feel like a mitt, it just makes everything so seamless. With a glove, I felt like it took forever to try to rub it into the skin and then I still had streaking like I usually don't get streaking but with the glove I did maybe it takes practice I don't know I just don't like the whole latex glove situation not for me but use whatever works for you so I'll use a, a mitt this one here and I start at the bottom portion of my leg so here's my leg and I'll start at the bottom of the leg and I'll go over like the shin area the back the calf and then with whatever's left over I'll go over my foot and my toe toes. I don't want to apply any fresh product around my ankles and toes. I just use whatever's left over on the mitt because you don't want those areas to be too dark. So just use whatever's left over on the mitt and then I'll also go up over the knee. Pretend like this is my leg. So you apply self tanner to the glove, go over your shin and calves and then go down over your feet, your toes with whatever's left over and then over your knees. And then I do the upper part of my leg. I'll do like the back the butt cheek area then i'll move on to the other leg do the exact same thing and then i move on to my stomach my back when it comes to my back i will do the lower back and then i'll apply some more to the mitt grab my elbow and then i kind of do this and i push my elbow down to try to get as far back as i can and then i'll kind of just look in the mirror and see where do i need to rub it out all of that. I feel like winter time you don't have to be as precise because nobody really sees back there but just kind of like use your hand and your elbow and then push it back this way, that way, this way, and this way I'm able to self tan myself. So once I have that then I'll do the chest, the neck, the shoulders, the arms here. I'll use another pump for the arms and then I'll bring it down to this part of the arm. When it comes to the hands this is where it gets really tricky and it can be a dead dead giveaway. So I'll apply a pump. Usually I'll do a pump for here and then a pump for this part of the arm. And with whatever's left over, I'll kind of like go over the elbow and then I'll do the fingers and the hand with whatever's left over. Just be very careful not to go too high up when it comes to your hand here. So you don't want to go past kind of where you have your wrist lines here, where it bends. Just very gently kind of diffuse it into the arm. And then I'll go over the hand portion right here not the knuckles just yet and then when it's time to do the knuckles and the fingers I kind of do one swoop I'll fold my mitt over like this so it's kind of like a u-shape and I will go over the knuckles and the fingers just like that with whatever's left over on the mitt it takes some practice but just use whatever's left over in the glove at that point you should have quite a, lot, a bit of product soaked up on here and just be very light handed you don't want to be too heavy handed and you want to apply equal pressure to both hands because I've had some instances where one hand ended up having more self tanner than the other and it's not the best look. It takes a little bit of practice. Some people use a sponge or like a makeup brush sorry but that's just kind of my process. So here is my before pretty you know at my pastiest right now my summer tan has basically worn off and this is kind of like my all natural color. So let me apply some self tanner and show you guys what it looks like without it being developed, just kind of like the guide color. All right, here is what it looks like after I did change my shirt because once I'm done self tanning, I like to put on really loose clothing. I got this PJ dress from Walmart. It says Holly Jolly for like, it was like $8, Holly and Jolly. But you can see like it's still really bright, but compared to before, you can see that there's already some color on my skin and this is just the guide color to kind of help guide if you missed any spots where you're applying it, all of that it will develop over the next eight or so hours this is why i like to do it at night when you're self tanning you don't want to get your hands wet or any body part wet for a certain amount of hours because then it's going to leave a streak this is why night works best for me i also don't like the smell of self tanner even the ones that claim there's no self tanner smell there's always a self tanner smell there's always a self tanner smell. I don't care what people say. Some of them might be stronger than others, but there's always a self tanner smell. And I just feel gross putting like actual clothes on top. So I just prefer to do this at night. It just works best because then you, it can also develop throughout the night. And then you wake up, take a shower, shower off the guide color, and you're left with like this nice, gorgeous natural tan. And I love the formula from Bondi Sands, the Arrow one specifically. This one's more like a mousse. So it's not necessarily a pump. 
it's kind of like a mousse bottle but the reason why i love it is because there's almost no sticky feel to it like upon contact it's almost like a dry mousse i don't know if that makes sense so you do kind of have to rub it in fairly quickly like there's a little bit you can feel it a little bit but compared to other formulas this one i don't know i just absolutely love it and here's kind of like a full body shot this is without it developed just literally five minutes after i applied it yeah i'll show you guys what it looks like tomorrow morning good morning it's the next day and i wanted to show you guys how the tent tan how the town has developed how the tan has developed no idea what i was going for there this is still the guide color once i wash it off it is going to be lighter and less green this tan in particular comes off a little bit more green tone i will say at least for me personally i will say i'm very happy with my hands like they look super super duper natural in my opinion but i think the reason for that is because about an hour in to having the self tan i was like I gotta wash the dishes you know I had to I needed to get my hands wet like I couldn't not get my hands wet. I tried to be super careful but I was like no that's it's not working so an hour in after having the tan on I'd say it was about an hour I had washed off my hands up to here so there's a little bit of color in them because the way that the tan works is that even if you wash off the guy color it still continues to develop for the next like six eight hours or so but it's just not gonna be as intense the sooner you wash it off so I feel like I might start doing that in the future is leave it on the hands for like an hour or so and then wash it off because that way you're not risking your hands being super duper dark and it just looks a lot more natural in my opinion. And then here are the wrists. I haven't washed anything off yet. And I'm really happy with like the feet. Like there's no, let me show you guys. I don't want to be showing off my feet too much. Like there's no weird streaks or anything going on. So really happy with that. Here's what the tan looks like all washed off did my skincare put my skincare on i feel like you're just left with a really natural nice tan looks quite natural in my opinion there's no weirdness going on so overall really happy with it i might start like rinsing off my hands so it doesn't develop all the way that way they look more natural i will say the hands and the face lose the tan the fastest the face specifically usually lasts like a day or two on my face so if you want to upkeep the tan on the face you can buy like the self tanner face drops so many different brands have them like the tan lux ones i showed you guys in the little bottle and you just add a drop to your face lotion and apply it like your regular face lotion and make sure you wash your hands otherwise it will stain your hands so don't forget to wash the hands and then when you're taking a shower the first time you just rinse it off don't go in scrubbing exfoliating shaving what i like to do is grab like a bar of soap and just go over to get rid of that self tan smell but i don't go in and scrub or shave or anything like that the next day when i'm washing off the guide color and then make sure you lotion every single time after you shower or every single day to kind of upkeep the tan but yeah that's kind of my self tan routine it's not like i said it's not like an insane difference plus right now i'm standing in front of a window but it does leave me with a, like a nice natural ish tan in my opinion that's it for today's vlog i feel like it was pretty long but i hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me i'll link anything i talked about down below let me know if you have any questions in the comments section thank you guys so much for hanging out and hopefully i'll see you guys in future videos